We are so excited um, to be here to talk a little bit about Julie Bard. Just gonna start over. <laughs> We're so excited to be here to talk a little bit about Julie Bardman and everything she means to us. My name is Maura Rockcastle. I'm principal and co-founder of 10 by 10. My name is Ross Altheimer, principal and co-founder of 10 by 10 and also founder of the JB Fan Club. Um, I have known Julie since I was nine years old. I knew her as my dad's fun work colleague during their shared tenure at the University of Minnesota School of Design in the early 90s. When I was a teenager, I wanted to go to art school. I did not identify comfortably as an artist then, and I was pretty unsure of that direction. So my dad introduced me to Julie, this incredibly cool and hip woman who had gone to the art school at Carnegie Mellon and was teaching in the landscape department at the U. At that time, Julie offered me a way of seeing art school as a critical foundation for many other things, a way of thinking, of investigating curiosity, and I've never really looked back. I remember wandering through Julie's empty apartment the day she left Minneapolis for the University of Virginia. The moving truck was full on the street, and I recall my dad's sense of loss at losing a design colleague who he believed in and trusted and admired. A couple years later, Julie wrote a letter of recommendation for me to attend the BFA program at Carnegie Mellon. And while I chose not to move to Pittsburgh then, little did I know that our paths would cross again in the same city in the future, marking our first of several professional collaborations. I saw Julie on and off during grad school and we stayed in touch as my early career in New York City wove in and out of hers. Julie never held back during that time from telling me what she thought about my choices in New York City. She was honest and straightforward, and I've always been super thankful for her perspective, even if I might have gone in the opposite direction on occasion. So, many, so much of Julie's power comes from her spirit. She emits this raw, vulnerable, accessible, honest, and creative light that sees and honors the world for what it is. She's feisty and authentic in a discipline thick with male white dominated leadership. In my early career, she represented hope and an alternative. She allowed me to dream of a different future for myself with more courage than I'd ever been offered by any other mentor or teacher or boss. When I met Ross in Minneapolis and learned of his relationship with Julie, I have to admit it did relieve me a little bit and it helped us build a foundation of trust. Over the last six years as a collaborator, Julie has helped me build confidence. She told me that I have something to say that is worth listening to and to speak louder and to keep reaching and to trust myself. That has been so impactful for me. To have someone whom you admire so deeply offer that kind of feedback is rare and so invaluable. She has supported me on team phone calls, in front of clients, in front of colleagues, on juries, and she's lifted me up in moments when I was not so sure about my place in this field, and I really needed that. Her strength and fearlessness, her opinions delivered with forthright clarity and humor, of course, always humor, her depth of knowledge and steadfast commitment to visionary design that is regenerative and healing is a compass for so many of us. As a remarkable design leader, her work teaches us to honor the stories and the materials and in the plants and the authenticity of a place and the people who live there to peel back all the bullshit and build it like a motherfucker. Her work embodies why our role as landscape architects matter. The importance of regenerative design strategies, of deep research, of not scraping sites clean, of design as a series of layered processes in relationship with one another, of revealing site histories and telling stories that have the potential to both heal scarred and toxic sites, as well as reconnect people to these working landscapes in very profound ways. Her work and approach remain urgent and critical to our profession now more than ever. I couldn't be more excited to congratulate Julie on this incredible honor and to sit, share with you all how much her work and her mentorship and her spirit has meant to me personally over these last 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> I should help them then the other co-founder of the JV Fan Club. Mm -hmm. uh, so like Maura, uh, I've had the great fortune of knowing Julie for the last 20 years. 
I met her while a graduate student at the University of Virginia. Julie is the reason why I became a landscape architect. Uh, she was my professor, uh, is a longtime mentor, and a committed and honest friend. I've been blessed with many amazing teachers, but she by far has had the biggest impact on me personally and professionally as anyone I've encountered in my career. I think my story could be repeated by the hundreds of students that have had the great fortune of knowing Julie. Julie has been there for every significant step of my path to and, and through landscape architecture. My decision to become a landscape architect in grad school was a result of me walking by one of her studios my first year as an architecture student. I remember seeing her far down the hallway the first time with her bleach blonde hair, hearing her speak with passion and honesty and seeing the students thoughtful work and engaging in a dynamic and elevated dialogue, of course with swear words. I was blown away by her commitment and presence and just how badass she was. I was also super intimidated. I had no idea what landscape architecture was at the time, but I figured if she was doing it, I had to do it too. After enrolling in the program, I had the chance to work with her closely and get a more intimate connection to her through reviews, design studio, uh, planting and technology classes, uh, and just the social life of the school. She modeled for us how to think about a critical practice in the design studio and her own practice dirt. She took us to DC with our Watts Branch studio in Marvin Gaye's neighborhood, where we worked with the stream community leaders and imagining the future with them uh, about this about this neighborhood. She modeled for us how to consider all the layers of landscape art and community in combination with justice, truth, culture, and storytelling. It was the first time I was also assigned a song as part of studio prep, What's Going On. We also wrote a song with her for the studio. Watts Branch is a very pretty stream. I, get, I hope you get a chance to hear her sing that. Watts Branch is a very pretty stream. It makes me very happy. <laughs> oh, Watts Branch. <laughs> okay, my decision to move to Minneapolis had a lot to do with her connection to Minneapolis. It was where she had her first teaching gig and she had deep connections to both the practice of architecture and landscape architecture, which she gladly extended her network uh, on my behalf. Inspired by her time at the American Academy in Rome, I also pursued the Rome Prize. This is when she moved her practice to New York. She offered to write me a letter. She put me up in her loft for both the interview and the Rome Prize ceremony. She was the loudest person in the room when they announced my name. She bought me dinner and made me coffee. And starting 10 by 10, as Maura had mentioned, and we got to talking about some of our sheroes and realized we both shared a connection to Julie. Dirt Studio sets, set the bar and continues to set the bar for, for our work. We had the great fortune of collaborating with Julie on the project that launched 10 by 10 called Mill 19. It was a competition with MSR and Dirt uh, studio in Pittsburgh on one of the last remaining steel mills in the city. We shared lots of time together on site. She helped us write a proper scope of work. We collaborated on design ideas and got to see another side of her as a dynamic, engaging, and truth-telling collaborator. She produced these amazing hand drawings that challenged the way that we were thinking and synthesizing the site. It was the first time I'd heard the word butch used, and, and maybe I've never heard it since then, used to describe the character of what the landscape should be. And she continues to be a collaborator of ours to this day. Julie models courage and leadership, fearlessness in all aspects of her life. You could write an alternate essay with Zoom source title on her work, The Hardcore of Beauty. I'm so grateful for all you have given me as a friend, mentee, and student. Grateful for all you have given to us in the practice. I can't imagine anyone more deserving of this recognition. Congratulations, JB. You are still the most badass landscape architect I know. <laughs>